mother was 28 years old when she was murdered, and she had 12 children. I'm the last survivor. I'm the 12th one. And um, so she was 48 years old when she had me. And she would have to stay at home and keep the youngest child sometimes. And Daddy would take us to church in a carriage. <laughs> And of course, the, we didn't have air condition, and we didn't have a hard service roads then. So mother made us dusters to wear, so we wouldn't get our dresses dusted going to church. And we'd pull them off and leave them in the carriage before we went in church. Anybody wore bonnets then. They didn't make straw hats like they do now for people to wear when they go out in the sun and they wore bonnets. Wasn't many Sundays before somebody didn't come and eat with you. Now, they don't do that now, but we had company. Quite often, people would come home from church with you, but they, they don't do that anymore. And that was Annie Kibbs and Grace Buck, Luce Hale, and myself. And I just don't remember where that was taken, but it, you can see it was a stump there. We were sitting on that stump, but that was a church picnic. We had a swing on the back porch and chairs up there, and, and uh, you can seat a lot of people on there. Where sometimes they just said, let's take the pictures off the steps here, and uh, they'd take them out. Well, at first, we didn't have no ways to go to school. We were too small. So my father got a teacher. So we had teachers. And they boarded at home. And we had teachers for until we were in third grade. At least I was in the third grade. And then I went to Rochelle. And we had an extra building. We called it the, the wash house. <laughs> It was two stories, and when we butchered hogs, we took care of all the meat in, the, in on the first floor, and on the first, second floor, we we had apple trees and pear trees on the farm, while we'd keep our fruit up on the second floor. But um, we had a big fireplace in there, and we had benches, and uh, it was plenty of room. We, had a very nice place for school. We used to make a freezer ice cream every Sunday morning before we went to church. We had cows, of course, and we used uh, milk and cream. And uh, we we made our, we had an ice house, so we, when they froze hard enough to put, their ice house had a wall, a stone wall around it. and. Uh, we put ice in there and we could keep it all the winter until late in the spring. So we'd go down and have to have a ladder after you use so much of the ice to go down in there and get that ice and we put it in the freezer. Uh, we had a wooden bucket or tub and then you put your ice, uh, your ice cream in a can and put it down and put ice all the way around it and turn it until you froze hard. And of course, us kids would just get it, get it and you drive around right down the farm. And uh, I don't think I ever had anybody to teach me how to drive. Uh, we just learned ourselves. And then when we get a permit, permit why we took off. They were good days. They were good days. People don't have good times like we did when we come along, I don't believe. I'll take the time when I came along. Better not take the time now. Well, it was a baseball game at Madison. It was during the week. And we were, my brother and some of us was on the way uh, going to that. In fact, you know, they used to have protracted meetings at the church for a week when they had meetings then. 
and they would have services in the morning so the older people could come. And um, we had been to church that morning, and his sister came home with us from church, which they, we did that in those days, you know, went home with one another, and then go to church that night, and then they'd go home. So on our way to the ball game, we had a flat tire, my brother did, and he came along. And um, he said, well, I'll have you out. And my brother said, well, I'm about through now. I think I can manage it. So he said, well, any of y'all want to ride with me on up there? And I don't know why I did, but my sister and I got in the car with him. And, <laughs> and we went on to Madison. So the ball came. So I think he went back, went on back home with us. I said, well, for you go back home with us and have supper and, and go to church tonight. So we did, from, uh, which I never, never thought it would turn out to what it did. <laughs> but I didn't regret it. I never had any regrets at all. So from then on, we gradually went together, so had a few dates and just kept on. I think Frank took me <laughs> to the fair one night, Orange Fair, and I won that doll. And that's why I, why I have that doll there. He was in the Navy in World War I. And when he got out of that, he worked here at Sparks' store, I believe, for a little while. I believe he traveled for a while. Worked for a tobacco company, I believe. And then he, his brother-in-law, had you know store up there and post office, and he worked up there for, for until he started the uh, store at Orange. And his brother was working Rufus. I think he was selling refrigerators, and they decided to go in the furniture business together, and they opened up on Railroad Avenue, and they was doing fairly good with him, satisfied with him. So then they opened up on uh, Chapman Street, and they stayed there until uh, his brother was taken sick, and he passed away with cancer in 62. And he kept the store open until about 70. So we had set our wedding date for the 35th, I think, of January, that we would go to the, they had the furniture show every January and July in uh, North Carolina, and one or the other would go to that every year. So he thought, well, we'll go to the furniture show and then take in going to Florida. So. A deep snow came on Tuesday. <laughs> so the telephones was out of order, and Frank, I didn't hear a thing from him until Friday evening, and on Saturday we were supposed to get married. I wanted a church wedding, but I knew my mother and father couldn't go, because the mother just wasn't able to get out in the winter time. Like. So I said, I'll be married at home. And that's where we were married. And the snow came, and Frank called me. The road was all out of order, no one could get over. We finally got the snow cleaned off the roads. He called me Friday and said, well, can you go to Madison? And I think we better go up and get our marriage license if we're going to get married tomorrow. <laughs> So we did, and the preacher finally got it home, and we were married. So we left there Saturday morning after we were married and drove to Lynchburg that day in the car, and then we went on to North Carolina the next day, and we left the car there and went on the train to Florida. He was going to Richmond one day, and I said, well, I would like to do some shopping. That must have been pretty early after we were married. And uh, so a neighbor of ours went with me. And it was a rough day that day, but that was the 
somebody snapped that on, on the street in Richmond. I just got that letter in mail one day, or that bill, rather. <laughs> and I thought, well, so I hope I paid it. <laughs> I hope I more than paid it. <laughs> but I thought it was cute. <laughs> A lot of people tell me today, I still have the furniture that I bought from the store. Well, that was our neighbors surprised us and on our 25th anniversary and gave us a party. And that was the end, those pictures there. But yes, one of the neighbors invited us over to their home that night for dinner. And then after we finished eating, they uh, said, let's go out to ride. So of course we said, okay. And we didn't think anything. And when we got, they brought us back home. I could see, I didn't see no cars there or anything. They parked over at our neighbor's back of us at Bunky Jones, Betty Jones. And I said, Frank, I said, I believe I see a little light in the living room. And I said, I didn't see a leaving light on. So when we opened the front door to go in, everybody said, surprise. So the house was full of people, and that's what it turned out to be. Mm -hmm. Well, that's me in my kitchen, and that's me. I, I love my kitchen. Well, I just kept looking in every book I could get to find plans of what I wanted. So finally I found this one. We made a few changes, but Bobby Butler built the house. Wow. The church used to be back in the cemetery. Did you know that? It was back farther in the cemetery than what it is now. Hmm. And at one time they said, how about moving the church out? And I thought to myself, that can't be done. That big church moving it forward. Well, I was on the committee. So it was moved out of Sahara here in town. Do you remember him? Well, he was the one that moved it out. Did a wonderful job. And after that, of course, we had to take the pews out and all the furniture and everything. And we put it over in the Rochelle High School building. That's where we stored it while that was being done. And when we were cleaning it up and getting all the furniture back, I said to uh, some of the members, I said, I don't see why we can't have a homecoming like the other two around here. And so we talked it up. Mr. Trifon was a preacher then. And uh, so we talked it over and we decided to have it. And he came by my home one day and asked me would I take charge of the kitchen. That day. When we moved it out, we put the addition on, on it then. And he asked me, would I take charge of the kitchen? I said, well, I'll do the best I can with it. So in September, we had the homecoming, and we had a good crowd, and we've been having it ever since. I've been going there all my life. It certainly was an easygoing person. I never heard him or saw him get mad and upset over anything. He, just, he was an easy person to get along with. He was, and I reckon I was his baby. <laughs> <laughs> they always said I was. <laughs> I never remember him whipping me at all. <laughs> well, they told me I said, that I had to go to church that day, which I said I wanted to follow in his footsteps. And so uh, I did go. And we're the only two at that church so far. Yeah. have been a, reached 100 years old.
this is the way Mount Nebo we wish for every Sunday. This is this is marvelous, and we welcome all of our visitors and guests. Uh, and I think it's just I, I know that in my lifetime I will never ever I'm sure be celebrating a birthday, a hundredth birthday on. Sunday on the very birthday, and Verdi has done that for us to make um, this a very special Sunday, not only to here to worship our Lord um, and to remember, um, but also to, to honor Verdi and uh, what an amazing witness that um, not only was she in Mount Nebo on her 100th birthday, but her father was in Mount Nebo on his 100th birthday. And I'll bet you there are not a lot of families what, a, what an amazing celebration for, for Verity and her family, but also for us in Mount Nebo and, and uh, as her church family. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Fred Brisbane, and I'm Vice President of the Council here at Mount Nebo Church. And the Council is talking about some special ways that we might honor Verdi on the occasion for her 100th birthday. Kicked around a lot of ideas. Kept coming up that Bertie was really interested in the cemetery and seeing that the cemetery was well maintained. Bertie said she was delighted that we would honor her in this way. So the response was really overwhelming. We set out to do this uh, Thrivent Lutheran Services. We had a $1,300 allocation in Thrivent for this year. And I said, well, we don't want to double that. We want to raise five or six times that much money in Verdi's honor. But thanks to all of you and everyone who responded, we have today $17,015 in your honor. Thank you very much. Good, thank you. Thank you all.